I finally finished this little power supply. It's done. It works well. A bunch of holes have been drilled in this case. Top and bottom and back. It's very compact. And in the next 20 or so minutes, I'll show you how I arrived at this. There will be templates of the front, top, and back. But bear in mind, they're there for this case. If I have an opportunity, I'll make a template for this case. Because if I had it to do over again, I would have preferred to put this in a larger case. So to make a front panel, what I do is I print from my template, just using cheap white copy paper, the front panel layout. I do my best to center the paper on the blank panel. I put glue down on half of the uh, front panel. I lay the paper down and try to get it as perfectly centered as I can. I clamp it. I lift this up and I glue the rest of it. And I lay the paper down. Now when you have a cutout in the front like this, you have to be careful not to get up a bump in the paper. Depends on how you lay it down. It could bump up here. Work all that out. And I let the glue dry. Now, then I take an automatic center punch. You can buy these on Banggood and eBay from China. This one is a starret, but they do make these automatic punches for like three dollars. I guess I should show you how it works. I very carefully put this point in the center of the X and then bang. It makes, if we can see that, a tiny little dent. Then I drill all of the proposed round holes with a very small drill. Starting the small drill on the center punch. Then I get the smallest whatever, in this case it's a number three screw, and I work my way up using ever larger drills until it fits. Now I'm not quite to that point yet. Making sure that the holes, for the most part, are as centered as they can be. And what I do is I work all the holes up until the smallest thing fits. Then I may take a magic marker or something and X out that hole. That means that hole's done. Don't make it any bigger. Then I proceed to the next largest device and the next largest device, and then the very largest devices, a little bit at a time. When I finally get all the holes drilled to size, I'll then cut out this with a circular device or a coping saw or whatever, with all the holes cut, including this. Then I'll lay the final front panel on. Now, normally I make the final front panel out of some stiffer paper, card stock or whatnot. Now, as holes go, these four holes are, must be very accurately located 
because they have to line up with these, well, really they have to line up with these holes because this is going to mount hung off the front plate. Now these machine screws will be turned upside down. These holes are supposed to be on three quarter inch centers. If they're not, it doesn't really hurt. It just means you can't use one of these pre-made banana plugs. And I have made these on three quarter inch centers just because it's the proper thing to do. These holes, which will end up with the potentiometers passing through them, they don't need to be very accurately located, although it would be nice if they weren't offset grossly. And they can be considerably bigger because we're not going to use any nuts on these. And the hole itself gets covered by the shroud of whatever knob you use. So, in a case like this, I would make these holes fairly oversized. The reason being that when you put down the front, the final front panel, you need all these holes to be located in the same place as they are in the front panel. These holes. You need to make the front panel holes a little bit bigger so there's some slop in it. Now fortunately, with the exception of these four holes, everything is loose. These switches are loose. Well, these aren't loose, but we can make these holes oversized. These four components are loose. So their exact location depends on how neatly you want the power supply to go together. You don't want these holes to be cocked. which is one of the reasons I print, I draw this up in AutoCAD, I shift things around. I mean, I don't have a dimensional drawing of this board, at least I haven't found one, so I take a, a micrometer or a set of dial calipers and try to locate everything. I test fit. I make a sample front panel and test fit it, and if necessary, make adjustments. So with my abused temporary front panel, this is what it will look like. I'm not married to these knobs. I intend to replace them. I have them on order. And I just happen to put these two recessed banana jacks on the right. Had I put them on the left, everything would be fine. Now I made allowances for this switch to miss this post. However, these banana jacks hit this post. I'll have to modify that a little bit. In any event, what I'll do before I publish this as a template, I'll move this a little bit. I, probably a switch to just shift them that just a, a, a very small amount. You see the black one's hitting. And of course the red one would hit the upper post. Had I just reversed the position of these jacks everything would have worked. I believe what I'm going to do is mount the circuit board here and can I do it? I believe I'll end up mounting it in this configuration. Although I don't know whether I'll be able to get an IEC connector involved. Slide that forward a little bit. Slide it. 
I've decided to drill vent holes in the top and the bottom uh, where this transformer is going to be mounted. Now since the bottom center fits flush with the case, I'm not going to drill these holes. And because of the mounting holes, or the assembly holes, I'm not going to drill these two holes. In any event, I drew a template. I've got these staples glue here. The reason I glue it down so thoroughly is so that drilling debris does not collect underneath the paper. A lot of times when you drill these holes you'll get some cuttings under the paper between the plastic and the paper and then they'll tear the holes. Well we've made a little bit of progress. Here are ventilation holes drilled on the top and of the bottom where the transformer is mounted. And what I've done, and I'll try to correct my template, is I've ground off the side of these banana jacks to clear this stud. So if I could get my fan and knobs, I would put a permanent front panel on this. So now I'll proceed to mount the actual circuit board. Something like this, I think. And an IEC connector. Something like this, well, really this. That should allow me to clear this post and I'll mount it high enough that I clear this fan connection. I have elected to mount the fan to the back panel and of course the fans mounted to the heat sink. So, we end up with the whole thing hanging off the back panel. I mounted a fused IEC connector on the back panel. I'll provide a template, a drilling template, for this. If you think you need to uh, fill these holes with some sort of a support, uh, I think you should go ahead and do that. I, I don't think there's enough weight here that once the case is entirely on that this is going to matter. I did build a second I guess this is the second. I did build a second power supply. This is the one I originally built. And this is the second one. This one exhibits no fluctuation with either of these control boards. Both the current and voltage is very stable. And if you get it at the right point, it can vary plus or minus one digit. Now I'd like to point out the power switch. I've, uh, I don't know why I used white heat shrink brain fart. Anyway, I've hooked the, one of the transformer leads to it. And I put a ring terminal on it, on the threaded part. And I'll route this yellow wire back to the ground on the IEC connector. And by ground, I mean this contact. Not the grounded 
or neutral, but to ground, earth ground. At this point, the wiring is complete. I'll let you look at it and inspect it to your satisfaction. If you can see this, we're making uh, 15 volts, and you can see it's not jumping around or jittery. Now, the last thing I intend to do, I have the output hooked to my bench meter. I'll adjust this potentiometer. Now, this does not calibrate the front scale. It calibrates the output voltage. And I'll adjust this until my bench meter reads 15.00 something. And there we go. 15. And just for the hell of it, I'll run it up to 25 volts. So we've got 25 volts, if you can see that. And the bench meter reads 25.04 volts. We'll run it down to 5 volts. That reads, I think you may, maybe you can see that, 5 volts. And the bench meter is reading 5.016. I'm going to put the cover on now. And hopefully this will be the last we see of the inside of this power supply. 